What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and I am back with another edition of the betting show as we go into a relatively busy weekend in the world of mixed martial arts. I'm going to concentrate uh, mainly on two cards today. I have four bets from the UFC, and I have one from Cage Warriors, uh, which I will start off with here uh, today. Uh, but I'll run through that whole Cage Warriors card and uh, touch on a few of the bets maybe that I think uh, I would like outside of that. So, as you know, you know, I give you the five bets, but I give you a few more as well as we saw last week. I threw out uh, a few winning bets. And speaking of last week, what a bounce back week it was for the betting show. The week before we, oh God, uh, it, was, it, it was a golden goose, an egg. It was <laughs> not a golden goose. It was the opposite of a golden goose. Uh, we, we got them all wrong. But this week, we went four from four. The flyer, okay, the flyer didn't hit. It wasn't a mile away. Um, but we went four from four. Okay, the, the, flyer, the flyer was Carl Moore uh, plus 360, which I think, you know, as a flyer bet goes, not a, not, a, not a terrible bet. He won two of the rounds on two of the judges' scorecards. Well, one round on each judge. And uh, I actually thought he won the fifth. So he could he could have won the fight. Okay, I'm reaching a small bit, maybe with the Irish bias there. But aside from that, anyway, he uh, he put on a good show, and it was, um, you know, it was a knife edge type of fight for a lot of us. But anyway, the other four fights, uh, the other four bets, all hit. Fabian Edwards minus one forty. Uh, I I thought that was a great price for that matchup. Um, he, he maybe not his best performance, but he got through it, and I look forward to, to his next one. Uh, Patricio Fehea plus one hundred. Um, I, I said last week that was the that was a price bet. You like I have another one this week actually. The cage drivers bet <coughs> in an even matchup like that, or or one. Sometimes do you know what I like to do. Sometimes I like to favor experience, um, and that's what I did in that one. And that's funnily enough what I'm going to do in the one this week, but in a different sort of way. But we'll 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 get to that in a second. Um, <coughs> Mick Park and hit at plus or sorry mo- minus one forty five again. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good price, although the fight was closer than I thought it would be, and give all the credit in the world to uh, Mohamed Usman, I thought he fought well, and then the, the biggest bet of last week, plus 260, Rose Namunas to win by decision, uh, which uh, I loved as a bet last week, and I love it even more now, because, <laughs> because of it, so that is uh, four good bets from last week, uh, the biggest uh, price there, the smallest price, minus 145, uh, plus 100, and um, minus 140 as well as a plus 260, so some... Happy enough with that. Four from four. Uh, didn't hit the flyer. Overall, uh, 18 of 38. So getting back to that 50-50 record. And still, 10 weeks in, only hit one flyer. Only hit one flyer. So hopefully uh, hopefully that changes this week. Although, do you know what? I'm usually pretty confident in my flyers, foolishly, you know, as the record shows. But I, uh, I'm i not sure the one this week. Anyway, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. Okay. First bet I'm going for is from Cage Warriors, and the bet I'm going for is uh, Sean De Silva, uh, and he's taking on Lonier Kavanagh, uh, and his price at the time of recording is uh, plus 130, and that is the reason I've gone for this. Uh, it's that it's price of, uh, of plus 130. Um, I'll, sh- I'll show it you here. Lanier Kavanaugh minus 163, Shonda Silva plus 130. Um, I really like both of these guys, and it's unbelievable matchmaking. Like, like Unbelievable in a couple of ways, in that how are two such good prospects getting matched up? Uh, the next part is, I don't care. I'm delighted. Two really good prospects are getting matched up, and I... I have a feeling I know who's going to win, and that's Sean De Silva. And I, I, I will tell you the reason why, and I alluded to it a minute ago. It's just like that little bit of experience. I I think Sean De Silva is just a little bit further on in his career than Lanier Kavanaugh is right at the moment. Now, having said that, Sean De Silva, 6-0 and here in Sherlock, um, uh, 6-0, and, and Lanier Kavanaugh, Similar, 5-0. and all. So it's not miles away. The problem here is, right, Lanier Kavanagh, 24 years of age, uh, Sean De Silva, 28. You look at Sean De Silva's last fight, it's Gerardo Fanny, a former uh, title challenger. He's had a few fights in, in uh, Cage Warriors. Lanier Kavanagh at the other side of it then. Some good names, you know, he's fought uh, three fights in Cage Warriors as well, but, you know, not that 
not that sort of name that stands out like Gerardo Fanny. Um, plus, the way they have been fighting. So, the, I would describe the two of these in this way. I would describe Lanier Kavanagh as a guy you see and you think... Like if you, I've gone to obviously uh, uh, gone to and watched a lot of the amateur or new fighters here in Ireland or uh, obviously in the UK as well with cage warriors and other places, but but around the world as well. You know, we've we've uh, a lot of people covering the sport too. But uh, look, especially here in Ireland, I think we do a lot. And sometimes you see a guy right, and you think, "Ooh, this guy is like a good athlete. He's good technique. Um, he's a good coach, and all, all of those things." And you think. In five years' time, this guy is going to be some prospect. In ten years' time, he could be in the UFC or Bellator or PFL or anything doing really, really well. You know, you see someone like that. And maybe ten years and five years is a little bit too much, but you get what I mean. There's a guy at the moment, Conor McCarthy is his name. He's Peter Queeley is training him. He's won loads of amateurs, just turning pro, really good. And, you know, that, that type of guy I'm talking about. Lanier Cavan is that type of guy. Um, I, From the first time I saw him, I was... I remember my colleague Ian O'Neill, I've had here on here many times. We both text each other. I think it was probably after Cage Warriors 134. And God, this guy is. This guy is a real prospect. Like a real prospect. The problem with that, it's only in March 2022. And since that night, he's only fought twice. So to look at a guy and go, this guy is an unbelievable prospect. I can't wait to see what this guy looks like in two, three, four, five years. We're only, you know. We're only two years down the line. He's only had two fights. It's it's still early days in his career. Now, do I still think he'll be a really good fighter? Do I think he'll be a cage or a champion and get to do this? Yes, absolutely. But the problem is he's coming up against Sean De Silva. And Sean De Silva is a guy who, okay, as I said, only a few fights into his career, 28 years of age. He just looks, to me, less green, more ready like, if you were to put Sean De Silva into the UFC right now, I think he could hang. I think he'd do very, very well. I do think Lanier Camera probably needs five more fights, maybe. Now, would he go in there and beat some guys? Absolutely. I think he's good enough very, very much to do that. But to hang with, say, the guys in the top 20, top 25, I think he needs another bit of time. I think Sean Silva doesn't. I think he could do it right now. If you And, he, you know, if you are to ask me who I think has the higher ceiling... Who could be the better fighter in five years' time? Who could be a champion? I'd say Alan Kavanagh. I really, I really do think that. I think he is, and that's nothing against Sean De Silva. I think he's a very, very, very good fighter as well. But I, I, I think Alan Kavanagh is an unbelievable prospect. But a prospect is a prospect, and when you haven't reached that level yet, someone who maybe wouldn't, as you know, might not reach reach as high a level as you, could beat you along the way. Look at say. Look! Look at Dustin Poirier getting who? Who? Who do you get beat by? Um. Uh. Oh, a few people. Dennis Dennis Bermudez was it? Someone like that, or was it Max Holloway? Dennis Bermudez. I think Max Holloway. Dennis Bermudez. That's a good example. Or look at Conor McGregor early in his career got beaten by you know Joseph Duffy. You wouldn't have to be a good fighter, but you know obviously not the level of McGregor. And it ha- look, it happens an awful lot. And that's that to me is this sort of fight. I think maybe. Uh, the switch from striking to grappling will uh, be on Sean De Silva's side. I think if he's able to drag it into a bit of a war, it'll be on his side. If he can drag it like to the cage and make it a dirty kind of, you know, uh, a drag out type of fight, I think that benefits him as well. I think Lanier Kavanaugh wins the fight if it's a straight up boxing match, striking match. If he can get the first takedown, get on top. Although I don't, I don't think he'll be going for that. That's the sort of, of fight I see Lanier Kavanaugh winning. But I don't think Sean De Silva, with his experience, with the level he has fought at, will allow it to be that. You know, as well, he's fought he fought twice last year and t- twice in twenty twenty two, um, and he, uh, you know, it was so so not that much more than uh, Lanier Kavanaugh. And as I said, he hasn't fought that many. He just looks like the more you know, the more experienced guy. And I, I'm i picking it based on that alone. I'm picking it based on him being able to turn it into more of a war than maybe Lanier Kavanaugh is ready for at this stage of his career. And I'll say it again, I, I really hope no one listening to this thinks I don't think highly of Lanier Kavanaugh or anything like that, or it's any way disrespectful to him as a prospect. I just think Sean De Silva is at this very moment... 
a better fighter and further along. And I think a plus 130, I honestly think that's a smashing, smashing, smashing price. Uh, so that is bet one of this week. Right. I'm going to stay uh, on this side of the pond, but go to the UFC for my next two bets. Um, and... I could be I could be a homer here and pick the two Irish guys, but I'm I'm actually picking neither of them, but I'm picking bets in both of their fights. So I'm going to go with Caelan Lachran first, uh, who's in there with uh, uh, Angel Pacheco, um, and I'm, the bet I'm going for in that one, bet number two, is the under two and a half rounds at minus one twenty five. Um, I again I like this bet um, an awful lot. I. I have strong feelings on on this fight, which I will get to hear now, and I I think like you look at their records, which I'll, uh, I'll also get to in a second, and you mightn't think okay, they're still you know both of them still relatively young in their career. It's sometimes hard to gauge exactly where two guys are in their career, and you know um, wh- how they'll match up against each other. But you look at um, you look at the records. And I'm going for the under two and a half rounds. And this is the, the thing that stands out to me. Pacheco, zero decision wins. Okay, uh, two decision losses, but zero decision wins. Kane and Lockhart, only uh, one decision uh, either way. Right, so five knockouts, two submissions, seven out of nine for Kane and Lockhart. And for Pacheco, um, seven out of nine as well. Funnily enough, there you go. Um, and that is why, basically, I'm going for... The uh the under two and a half rounds, but it, there's another reason as well. Um, I think, I think Kaelin Lochran is uh is going to win this fight, and I think he's going to get him out of there. Uh, under in under the two and a half rounds, I watched a good bit of Pacheco. Obviously, I watched all of Kaelin Lochran's fights, being uh, Irish and all of that. But I watched a good bit, bit of Pacheco coming in here, <coughs> and what he's <coughs> look, not too dissimilar to the well. It it actually is dissimilar to the last fight. I I, I think I was going to say because of, I, I was talking about dragging someone into a war. I think that in the last fight it's more about the experience. I think this fight is more about Pacheco. Um, that's the way he fights. Like I don't think he is. How would you put it? Uh, this might sound a bit disrespectful, but I don't think he's the most technically brilliant fighter. Like when you look at say someone like. Uh, say like a Lanier Kevin or like a Kaelin Ockren or a, you know Aaron Blanchfield or Firo who are very good technical fighters as well as the rest of it as well as having heart and and, and all, and all of that Um, I don't think he just stands up to that level I don't think he's going to go out there and put on a um uh you know how, how would you how would you describe it I don't think he's going to go out there and put it on a a vintage technical display over three rounds to beat a guy at the level of Galen Lochran. Um, I think if he beats him, he's going to have to drag it into a war, make a tough pull him to the ground and everything like that. Um, and I don't see that happening. Kalen has very good wrestling, def- defensively and offensively. Um, you know, he he lost to Taylor Lapolis in his last fight on short notice as well. Um and if anyone has been watching Taylor Lapolis for the last few years, like he was in the UFC, he he didn't, you know, people say he got cut from the UFC. He was on, I think he was on a three-fight win streak or something when he was out to the UFC, but there was something that time about, you know, contracts or whatever, and he's he's been killing it on the local scene, and he came in there, Kaelin Locker on short notice. Again, too too much too soon, I think, for Kaelin. Um, and he still could have won that fight. It was relatively close. But I don't think Pacheco is near the level of Lapalus. I don't think he's near the level of Kalen, to be honest. And I think when he goes in there and he feels the power of Kalen Lochran, I think it's going to be a big issue. Um, when he feels the wrestling as well of Kalen Lochran, I think it's going to be a big issue. Um, he, I, I watched some of Pacheco's fights. One of his fights, he just like literally walked across the cage. Someone just took him down. Uh, now, he's very, very good when it gets into a war. It's going to be hard to finish, so that's the biggest risk for the, the two and a half, under two and a half rounds. Very, very hard guy to finish, very hard head, but I think, I think Kellen Nochran is just going to be so far ahead um, that it, it's he's he's just going to beat him down. Like If he doesn't knock him out or finish him early, I think it's going to be such a beatdown that uh, he, he will finish him. Now, 
I mean, I, I, I'm being very strong on this because that's what I believe. You can call it. You maybe you can call the Irish bar or something. But no, I, I, and I very rarely say that. For the next fight, I won't be saying that either. We'll, I, I'll get onto that. But I think that's a great price. The, uh, the prices for, um, the rest of, uh, for for uh, you know, um, other parts of that fight. Let's uh, let's put it that way. We're not there yet. So. Uh, at time of recording, I'll just show you here now. So, Kalen, um, so the under there, uh, two and a half rounds, is minus 125. As you see, the other bets are not up there yet, but the Kalen straight up is minus 325. Some people, I think, agree with me. He's a big favorite, uh, plus 255 for his opponent. But I love Kalen inside the diff- distance. I love Kalen uh, maybe by submission even, but maybe those prices will come up later in the week and we can see in the, uh, in the comment section about those. But, yeah. That is the second bet, Cale Lochran. No, just the fight itself, minus 125. It's not even Cale Lochran to win minus 125. So if I'm completely wrong uh, and Cale Lochran gets finished, we could still have a winner. So, um, Right, uh, bet number three. Uh, I, I said I'm going for the Irish guy. I'm going for Reese McKee and Chidi and Jaquani. This time I'm going for the under as well. One and a half rounds at minus 150. Um, I just think someone's getting knocked out here. I think both of these guys have too much uh, in their locker. They have too much power. They're too aggressive. They're too good of strikers for someone not to get knocked out here. Like Reese McKee, you look at like you look at Reese McKee's record: thirteen wins, thirteen finishes. That is an unbelievable record of finishing to have. Chitty at the other side of it, then like. Oh, 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 not not as much, right? Not as much. Okay, twenty two wins, fifteen finishes, seven decisions. He's been finished eight times himself as well. We'll just have a look at the the Reese one here. Thirteen knockouts and and ten. Uh, sorry, uh, thirteen finishes, ten knockouts, three submissions. Um, it's it's an unbelievable finishing rate that that both of them have really, and I think that's the way it goes. Like this fight, to me, is. Going to be won in either a dominant fashion by one of them, I think. I think it's either going to turn into a kicking match from the outside or and a long fight. Uh, I, I, when I say long fight, I mean like um, a long distance fight. Uh, well, long range fight. There you go. There's a long range fight, which I think will benefit Chitty. Now, Reese is actually good from long range as well, but I think against Chitty, I think it's a touch inside of that range will benefit him. I think if he can do that and, and stay inside of that range, I think that turns the key to Reese McKee. So I think um, key to McKee. There you go. No pun intended. So whoever can win that battle, I think wins the fight. I think Reese when he's Gets that step inside, land that left hook, land that power right hand, the power left behind us. He's such a such a powerful fighter and such a good fighter inside. And you know, here here I'll turn my bit of Irish uh, into it. It's a lot of people like who maybe aren't Irish or haven't watched a lot of Reese might say, ah, "Look, this guy is getting got into the UFC, didn't take his chance, got into the UFC again, lost his first fight," you know. Is he any good? Is he? I'll tell you, he, he's a very, very, very good fighter. He, like, he got so unlucky coming in there against, um, like, if you look, look, like, look at this, look at this madness. Came in there against Shemaev on short notice, lost. Went in against Alex Morono, who is a very good veteran fighter uh, in the UFC, lost a decision and got cut. Like, you think he would have got an extra fight for coming in there to fight Shemaev, wouldn't you? And you'd think they would have given him a bit of leeway, but no. Goes out, absolutely decimates three lads in a row, knockouts all over the place. Burlington fight of the year contender. Jimmy Wallhead, a former UFC fighter, meant to give you a good fighter as well. And he comes in against Angelusa. Okay, that would, you know, that's probably his most disappointing performance uh, in the UFC. And it's a must win here against against Chitty. But I. I would just hope people realize that how good of a fighter he is, and I hope he shows it in this. I ho- and like even if it's let's say he loses or it's a close fight or whatever it might be, I think he still deserves another chance because Reese can be one of those guys that's a fan favorite in the UFC, a knockout artist. That if he gets one win, right, I think he'll probably win seven of his next ten. I think he's that sort of fighter, right? When he gets into 
right, okay, I've won a fight now. I can relax a little bit. I'm in the UFC. I'm not going to get caught if I lose this fight. And then he'd start winning and winning and winning fights. And, okay, will Reese be a champion or ranked or anything like that in the welterweight division? That's going to be very, very tough. Very, very, very tough. But I, I, I truly believe he can be a fighter that's in the UFC for a good while with a little bit of luck or something like that. But in, And in this fight, I think that's why maybe he's a little bit uh, underrated. Um, the um, you know the odds would suggest that maybe a little bit as well that he is the underdog at plus one two four minus one forty for Injukwani. Although it's you know it's it's a fair enough price I suppose. I think it's it, it I I think that's just about right maybe. So um, look I I think as I said I think either Injukwani will land those big head kicks, low kicks, body kicks from the outside, or Reese will be able to break in a small bit into that distance and land these big shots inside. And I think one of them, one of them is going to, one of them is going to get knocked out. I really, truly believe that. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a barn burner of a fight for a round. And it's going to be, I don't think it'll last much longer than that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, okay. Those are the first three bets. Um, bet number four. I, I don't need to stay long at this. I've spoken about this fight a few times. Um, and it's just... I'm just going straight up Aaron Blanchfield. I think the minus 185 price... Although I don't like taking prices that small, I, I do like Aaron Blanchfield um, in this fight. I just think Firo... Again, like the fight I was talking about earlier on, the, the, the Sean De Silva, Lonier Kavanaugh fight. I think Manon Firo is a good, straight-up technical fighter. But does she have, like, the... I, I, I just clicked on Sherlock here and saw the nickname of Aaron Blanchfield is cold-blooded. And that's exactly the phrase I was looking for. Like, does she have the cold-blooded nature of Aaron Blanchfield? Like, that Jessica Andrade fight... I actually, I, I went back and watched a few fights. I didn't watch that one, funnily enough. Maybe I should have, but... Wasn't that the fight where she kind of had a tough first round? You're thinking, oh, God, is she going to push through this? And then she comes out in the second round and rear naked chokes her, you know? That's the type... That's the type of fighter I think that she is. And I think Firo, like, she's a, a big, tall, you know, three inches of height on her uh, fighter who uses that jab and stays behind it and, you know, la wins lots of decisions. And she's beaten some very good fighters. Like, I, I, I think at that weight class, when you beat Caitlin Chukagan now, uh, Caitlin uh, Sir, Sir Manara, um you know where you are as a fighter. You know that you can be a very good technical fighter. So if there's any piece of the puzzle that's not there from Blanchfield, she will expose it. But I think I think there are many pieces of puzzle there from Blanchfield. I think she's very, very, very good. And um, I, I just think she's going to... Look, you look at this fight, right? And you think, who's going to... Uh, control the cage. Who's gonna come out there and land a jab more, or um, you know, look the the tightest in terms of a technical fighter? And you probably Firo is probably the re the answer for all of that. But who's gonna get down and dirty? Who's gonna come in and land shots to the body, or get a you know get a big trip inside, or you know just turn it into a fight maybe that the other person doesn't want it to be. In, in like a nasty one. No, I don't think uh, Blanchfield probably wants it to be a straight-up technical striker match or whatever. But, you know, and I think Blanchfield has the ability to do that. I really think she does. And that's ma that's the main reason I'm picking her. You know, I don't, I don't have a big, uh, you know, massive technical breakdown for this like I had maybe for some of the other fights. There's a massive reasoning behind it other than that. Like, you watch him and you think... Like, here, here I put it this way: Can Blanchfield survive in a fight against Manon Firo the way she fights? Yeah. Can Firo do the opposite? And it's not that it's a no, but I think it's going to be a lot harder. I think she'll struggle a lot more. I think with a pace that Blanchfield will put on her, with the again the cold blooded nature that Blanchfield has, I think Firo. Like even though she's she lost to my uh my country mate Liam McCourt and she hasn't lost since. I think was I actually at that fight? Where where was that on? That was a cage where I was ninety four. Was that in Dublin? 
I think I, I, I think I might have been at that fight. No, no, I wasn't. It was in Belgium. I wasn't at that fight. Oh, Ilya Tapuria. Jeez, there were some good fighters on that fight. Cage, Cage Warriors 94, Ilya Tapuria, Jai Herbert in the UFC now. <coughs> Don, Jonathan Desmond. Jeez, that was a pretty good. Thomas Tommy Langowski, he's in the, the PFL tournament coming up, Liam McCord. Number one contender. But jeez, there were some very good uh, some very good fighters on, on that. But uh, I, 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 I'll go back to the betting Um, Yeah. Bet number four. Is uh, is Aaron Blanchfield at uh, at minus one thirty five? Okay, the flyer. Again, I I am uh, uh, not the not the most um, confident in this flyer, but here it is: flyer of the week, Vicente Luque to win by submission at plus five hundred. Uh, Vicente Luque is fighting Joaquin Buckley, and let's um. Let's look at the stats here. Vicente Luki. Lu- Luki? Luki? Uh, 22, 9, and 1. Uh, submissions, 8. 8 submissions being submitted himself twice. Um, Numinsa on the other side of it. 0 submissions. Wins, 0 submission losses. So, you know, never been submitted, but never submitted anyone either. <sighs> Ad- advantage Luka. <laughs> advantage Luka. But the one thing I would say, right, you look at Luque's, uh recent fights, and you look at that. I suppose it wasn't too recent, but Michael Chiesa and Tyron Woodley, right? Two different sorts of fighters. I say Chiesa is, you know, comes out and tries to strike, but is more of a, a ground guy. Tyron Woodley, okay, it was at the end of his kind of time, but uh, obviously an, an all rounder, a boxer, a wrestler, a big power puncher. So like you had the two of them in, and you know may, maybe you have. The recipe for a Buckley, and he submitted both of them. Like Buckley, can can wrestle, and he's a good striker, and he's well rounded. And I think his, his cardio is very good, and he keeps going all the time. But I think, I think Luke uh, again, and maybe this is the team of this betting show. But I think he can kind of drag it in and make it down and dirty. Like Buckley likes to do that as well, but very much on his terms. And um, I was I, I mentioned my colleague again, you know, I was talking to him before, and he was talking about Luke and how how he was his favorite fighter at one time because. Because of that, basically, you know, because of he'll he'll put it all on the line, and even in fight like, like the Woodley fight where that wasn't going well at that time, there, like he'll put himself in danger or go for it so that he gets him like the Kiesa fight, you like Kiesa at that time was submitting a lot of people who's going to the ground with Kiesa and winning fights like that, and he did it, he goes for it, and I think in this fight, if you're like you think about it, right, um, uh, Jackie and Buckley. 12 knockouts in, in those 17, as I showed you there a second ago. Uh, head kick knockout over, um, you know, uh, Fialo, finished Jurev. Uh, f- and, and, you know, and okay, he hasn't had loads of finishes in the last while, but if you're thinking like, okay, he's head kicking people and all of that, we all know the Impica Sangana, he's spinning vaulted head kick KO, the greatest KO and knockout, uh, the greatest knockout in UFC history. Um, why not take this fight to the ground? You know, why put yourself in that danger? Why why let him get that head of steam as well, which he's very good at doing recently? You know, you have the ability to take it to the ground. You have a lot of submission wins. Do it. Take him down. Now, I said I, was, I was, wasn't that confident in it. Maybe I'm after growing. Maybe it's after growing in me there. Maybe it's after growing in me. So, there we go. That's it. Uh, <laughs> better of the week. Flyer of the week. Plus 500. It's a good price. It's a pretty good price, so Vicente Luque plus five hundred. Right, let's uh, let's look at some of the other prices and go through uh, each of the uh, the big bets for the uh, for the weekend. Okay, let's start with Blanchfield and Firo as we uh, see there um, minus one eighty. Actually, is the best price now for uh, Blanchfield Firo best price plus one six five. Let's have a little bit of have a look. I was looking at the over and unders in this. Um, I do like the fight to go to a decision minus one two five, um, but I I kind of think I I'd like to see how Firo fares through the first two or three rounds. You know, which you, which you obviously can't do, um, but you, you know, like maybe Blanchfield inside the distance is a possibility uh, as well. If you like the the knockout for Blanchfield. Uh, plus 950, which is a big one. 
Firo knockout plus 550. Blanchfield by submission is, is what they think. My, uh, uh, plus 250 best price. Uh, Firo by uh, submission is, a, is a, a bigger price there. But Blanchfield inside the distance. In, interestingly enough, plus 165, minus 225. Uh, not inside the distance, so you know there's some interesting prices there. I like, I I wouldn't at all um go against someone who goes a fight to go to decision is minus one two five, minus one oh five not to go to decision. You want to pick either of them, whichever you think. If you have a strong feeling on it, rather than the Blanchfield straight up, I wouldn't advise you against that at all. Straight up prices for Buckley and Luke. Uh, this was was going to be one of my bets, but I needed a, a flyer. Uh, minus 115 for Luca Buckley, minus 105. Uh, so Vicente Luca just about the favourite there. Sylvan Weidman, I stayed away from this. The only bet I was looking at this was the fight to go to decision as well, a plus 200. I like that. Like, Weidman ha- obviously hasn't looked great recently, but he has been sticking in there, you know? So I think that's the best bet in that one. Um, Silva at minus 280 is probably... A good enough price there as well. I like Algio, not maybe at that price. Um, and then we have the Inja Kawani, um, or East Wiki fight, which you already talk about. I, uh, you know, it's a it's a tough price there. Like, you'd probably have to go with Inja Kawani at that price. But I don't know. I, I'm riding with East Wiki. I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking I'm taking the Irish bias into here. Right. Uh, the next few fights. Um, Emers and Landwehr. Landwehr's due a win. You know, he's due a win, but I, I do like Emers. I think Emers is probably just a slightly better fighter than him. I like the price on Jan Jaroba here, to be honest. Like, Louis, Louis Gardines can be hot and cold, but she ha- look, she has looked good recently. But when I saw, actually, I think this price, I think this price went in from minus 170. Let me let me just check here. Uh, I think that was bigger earlier on when I looked at it. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm wrong, and it's actually gone out. So if that was to get out to maybe plus... 190, I'd probably go for Jan Jaroba, but other than that, no. Uh, Arsene Burns, I think uh, I think Arsene will win that one. I like Dennis Bazooka uh, to maybe, you know, he didn't have a great start to his UFC career. Uh, don't know a whole lot about Conor Matthews, but we'll see on that one. Uh, again, a few very even matchups here, isn't it? Um, with the Kaelin Nochran one. First of all, Petrovsky and Malkoon. I do like Jeff, Jacob Malkoon. I think a lot of people are very high on him. Um, but uh, I really, really fancy Kellen Ockren to win that fight as well. Let's look, have a look at Cage Warriors. Uh, the main event, Jordan Vucinic and Simone Andana. Um, I, <sighs> the price is too big, but I do. F- I really fancy Jordan Vucinic to win that. Ali and Curry, I like... I like Curry, but at that price, I'm probably betting Ali. I, I don't think Ali will win. I really don't. But that... I can't trust Will Curry. I just can't at this stage of his career. Uh, we talked about, obviously, Kavanaugh and um, and the Silva. One of the other bets I was looking at here, and I'm really, like, this Richardson, uh, San uh, I Ali San Talati. I watched him before, and I thought, this guy is really good. And it, it doesn't always work out for him. But I do, I do fancy him against Jamie Richardson. I like that price an awful lot. Um... And there was one more as well I wanted to touch on. Or did I? Where was it? Uh, oh, yeah. Josh Van Wardy. This price. Plus 163. Um, I watched a small bit of his opponent. I uh, There isn't that much tape on him. But I like Van Wardy. Again, a guy who the results haven't gone for him all his own way all the time. But that plus 163 fight, our price, price even, could be, uh, could be a good one. All right, everyone. Let's recap the bets. Sean De Silva over Cage Warriors, plus 130. Uh, Kellen Ockren versus Pacheco, under two and a half rounds, a minus 125. Minus 500 for Reese McGee, Chidi, and Jaquani, under one round and a half. Aaron Blanchfield, straight up, minus 185. And for the Flyer of the Week, I'm going for Vicente Luque to win by submission at plus 500. Pre- please bet responsibly. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the fights. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and I'll see you all next time.